guys, it's Dan back again with another Pro Guides video. Things are getting crazy out here with the release of Raided or Ranked. As most of you guys know, it opened up a few days ago and people are already starting to grind to Valorant. That leads into our question of the day. What do you think of the Valorant Raided Division badges? Do you like the simplicity of their design or do you wish for a more extravagant and complex emblem? Personally, I think they look a bit simple, but I do appreciate the sleek design. Anyways, with that said, let's move into the video. Sometimes the best solution to a problem isn't always the obvious one, so why not try something new? Today, we'll be going over the four most underrated guns in Valorant. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying these weapons are overpowered or anything like that. I just see people say that these weapons are bad and underpowered, but today, wanted to show you guys that maybe there's a bit more to these guns than meets the eye. Number 1. Marshall Starting at the top of our list today is the Marshall. Fast, accurate, and surprisingly powerful, the Marshall boasts a fire rate of 1.2 shots per second while scoped and 1.5 shots per second when unscoped. Its magazine can only hold 5 shots at a time, so be careful about how fast you pull that trigger. Since the reserve ammo is low as well, only giving you 15 extra rounds, trying to wall bang and spam wooden corners is not a great idea with this weapon. Although, because the Marshall is priced at only 1,100 credits, it makes it viable in a lot of rounds because it's cheap enough to not be a huge hit to your wallet. Our experts think the Marshall is being severely underrated right now because of how many people are comparing it to the Scout or SSG-08 from CSGO. If you're familiar with CSGO, you'll know that the Scout is definitely stronger in a few ways over the Marshall, namely the very forgiving 90 spare rounds and 10 round magazine size. The Scout also has two zoom modes, like the Operator and Valorant, and the Scout even has a mechanic named after it, Jump Scouting. Unfortunately for the Marshall and Valorant, it only has access to single zoom and has low ammo reserves. And no, you can't jump scout with it. I tried my best, but I just couldn't find a way to make it work consistently. However, the lack of a second zoom mode really doesn't hurt the Marshall, as most fights take place in pretty close quarters anyways. Plus, a weapon like the Marshall doesn't need 90 rounds to still be useful, as even with body shots, you can get an ace with only 10 shots. Another upside is the amazing no-scope accuracy on the Marshall. This thing can put out accurate no-scopes as fast as your finger can pull the trigger. Even up to a range of 50 meters, it can put up accurate no-scope shots. Just don't try to move a no-scope, as the moving inaccuracy is pretty high. Heading on over to Haven, I'm going to show you a few ways that you can use the Marshall to your advantage. Here on Seasight, you can set up near these stacked boxes close to Garage Connector. This way, you can use the Marshall's fast movement speed to peek around this corner and take shots at anyone running up sea long, or just peek around this corner to see into Garage. Combined with a character like Sage or Jet, you can even boost yourself onto the boxes with Jet's updraft or use a Sage Barrier Orb to get the drop on your enemies. Check out our Sage Guide to find some great tactics and places to use your Barrier Orb to combo with a Marshall. Heading on over to Bind, another great place to set up with a Marshall is B-Long. If you're playing a character with a smoke, you can even smoke off the cross like this to sit next to the teleporter for a really cool off angle. Be careful though, if you struggle to land shots with the marshal, sitting next to the teleporter is a pretty risky move. Moving to split, there's a really useful angle right here towards the back of A site. Use this corner to duck behind if you start getting shot, and if you start getting forced out of that position, you can always rotate onto A site or to heaven. Just be careful if you do move to either position, you're pretty vulnerable with only a marshal. So it may be worth investing in a ghost or frenzy for that round just in case. If sniping isn't your style, we still got your back with our next weapon. 2. Ares Heading into number 2 is the Ares. This LMG is a weird weapon with a few stats that don't look so great, but honestly everything works out once you start using it. Starting with the damage, the Ares requires two headshots to kill close up and three at longer ranges. You probably won't need to worry about those longer ranges, however, as it boasts a pretty noticeable movement speed penalty while equipped, and shots at longer ranges can become very inaccurate. On the plus side, you have a manageable spray pattern at close range and a very respectable 10 rounds per second, bumping up to 13 after 9 rounds fired or so. The Ares also gets access to a 50 round drum magazine with 100 rounds in reserve, so feel free to spray down as many corridors as you like. Costing only 1,700 credits, it can be bought for over 1,000 credits less than a Vandal or a Phantom. The Ares may look bad on paper. Sometimes, though, things just work out. The 13 rounds per second really help to remove some of the pain from having such low base damage and accuracy. It's not a worthy replacement for something like a Vandal, or even something like the Spectre if it's a save round. However, there are situations where the Ares can really shine over Spectre or be just as good as a Vandal. One of those is if you know enemies are going to be playing aggressive in a choke point. Think like a short on bind. You could slow down the push at that choke for at least a while simply by spraying it down and making it too dangerous for the enemy team to push. Another great way the firing speed can help this gun feel better is with damage output. 
When you're firing 50 rounds that quickly, some are bound to catch at least one player in the chest or head. So our experts think that the best use for this weapon is to just spray and pray. With the Ares not having great accuracy even on the first few shots and even while standing still, this was definitely a weapon designed to be emptied in one go. With that being said, choke points are not the only places where it's a viable option. Places like C site on Haven or even A site on Split can work since most of the time there's enough cover to watch the entrances without immediately being discovered. This can help give you that extra crucial second to get your Ares spun up and firing at 13 rounds per second. If you do buy an Ares, try to avoid heading to the middle section of a map or anywhere where there isn't a lot of cover like B site on Haven. If you don't have enough cover, then you run the risk of dying before you can get your Ares fully fired up. All right. We moved from a sniper to an LMG, so let's keep it moving with an SMG. Number three, Stinger. Sliding on into the number three slot is none other than the Stinger. Costing only a thousand credits, the Stinger is one of the cheapest automatic weapons in the game, only losing out to the Frenzy at only 400 credits. With 20 rounds per magazine and 60 in reserve, the Stinger should be more than enough to last you the round, which is more than I can say for the Frenzy. The main drawback that really pulls people away from the Stinger is its inaccuracy and low damage per bullet. However, it has the same upside as the Ares in that the Stinger has an insanely fast firing speed of 18 rounds per second. That's actually the fastest firing speed in the game, next closest being the Odin at 15.6 rounds per second after it spins up. As I mentioned earlier, the Stinger does lack some damage, requiring 2-3 to three headshots or 4-5 to five body shots to kill. But this shouldn't be a problem, however, if you use it in the way I'm about to show you. The Stinger does have a couple of things going for it, namely its crazy low price and crazy high fire rate. So our experts determined that if you're going to use the Stinger, keep it to pretty close range. Think like inside Hookah on Bind or Garage on Haven. These closed quarter spaces really let the Stinger shine as the fast fire rate allows the weapon to pump out bullets. And since the enemy will have to be pretty close to you in these areas, the inaccuracy stops mattering as much. The Stinger's running accuracy is only slightly worse than its standing accuracy also, so don't be afraid to start moving and shooting when you see an enemy to help throw off their aim. Stingers also tend to work better in sets of two or three, where once you and your teammates start firing, there are so many rounds flying at the enemy team, you're bound to get, at the very least, really high damage on anyone who dares challenge you. The Stinger is a weapon you should consider buying on save rounds as a drop for your teammates or even on a half buy round if you think you can get the drop on an enemy. Let's head back on over to Haven. With the Stinger having low wall penetration, be careful when trying to attack a position like A Long. It's a pretty open part of the map with long sight lines, and you won't be able to effectively spam the crates there. However, if you head straight instead of right, attacking A Short might just be what the Stinger needs to shine. Everything is close range here, and you can quickly have one of your teammates block off A Sight to clear this angle. There are better weapons in the game for sure, but with his only real competition at that price range being Bucky at 900 credits, it's definitely worth a try the next time you have some credits to spare. Just make sure to not try to use it anywhere that requires a lot of range. Time to round off this video with our last weapon, and to make sure we had something for everyone, we'll be ending with a rifle. But before we take a look at the Guardian, we have some exciting news to share with you. We have officially launched Valorant Coaching on ProGuides.com, so make sure to click the link in the description to learn from the best. Alright, now on to the Guardian. For the last weapon and the only rifle on the list is the Guardian. Being the only semi-automatic rifle in the game, players tend to overlook this weapon for the slightly more expensive automatic rifles. However, with one hit headshot potential or two or three hits to the body to kill depending on the range, it's definitely not a weapon to underestimate. The Guardian also has the added perk of a 1.5x zoom, giving it better sights than the Vandal and the Phantom. It does have a pretty small magazine though, only holding 12 rounds with 36 rounds in reserve. With a firing speed of 6.5 rounds per second, you can blow through your ammo pretty quickly, so be sure to take a look at your ammo after every engagement. The accuracy of the Guardian is also pretty good, especially at longer ranges where the increased zoom really comes in handy over weapons like the Vandal. Being cheaper than the Vandal or Phantom by 200 credits also helps if you're strapped for cash but still want a decent weapon. The Guardian is a marksman's weapon, hinted at by its lack of automatic fire and great accuracy on its first few shots. People tend to move towards the slightly more expensive rifles, but our experts think that depending on the map and where you are attacking or defending that round, the Guardian might be a viable choice. Let's head on over to A-Sight on Split. A great place to set up with the Guardian would be on Catwalk near this corner. If you happen to be a Sage main, check out our 25 advanced tips guide for a really cool ice barrier that you can use to boost yourself over A-Short from Catwalk. Back to the video. From here, you can easily watch A-Short, as well as watch Ramp. This angle also does not allow you to get rushed down as easily as you can see all the movements the enemy team is making towards A. You also have an easy escape route if things get hairy. Just jump back into heaven and take this corridor while waiting for your team to rotate. 
So when should you buy a Guardian? The best time is if you're sitting at that awkward credit range between 3200 to 3800. Buying a Guardian here might allow you to upgrade to heavy armor or buy that crucial extra ability. Try to avoid spamming the Guardian, however, as even though the first two rounds are very accurate, even shooting as fast as possible, the rest of the rounds become pretty inaccurate. So make sure to pause for a second between each of your shots for maximum effectiveness. The Marshal, Ares, Stinger, and Guardian are all weapons that may be overshadowed by other better guns, but you should give them a try in your games. Who knows, maybe at the end you'll find your new favorite weapon. And that ends our guide on the four most underrated weapons in Valorant. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end, and make sure to slap that subscribe button and ring that notification bell for more Valorant content coming soon. Make sure to post your reply to the question of the day in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time with another awesome guide.